Hi guys, I'm Akhil and I've been running a tech consultancy firm since the past three years. Since the past one year, we also started developing our own tech products. So I'm now the CTO at two different tech product companies. One is called Dominate.ai and it's it's on production and many companies are using it. And the other is RemoteTeams.io and it's uh, still on uh, beta mode. And um, I've been uh, sharing my knowledge on YouTube uh, by creating Golang tutorials. So Golang is just one of my ex expertise. I also have an expertise in uh, big data and AI and I'll be t teaching that with uh, Python and Spark and uh, you know uh, Hadoop and all those things I'll be teaching very soon and the other expertise that I have is Node.js so uh, the, the products that I build uh, have microservices you know they could be Golang and Python and Node.js so I, I use all of these technologies in the back end and the front end we use uh, React.js mostly uh, so, if, so I have more than 100 videos of Golang on my channel YouTube channel right now you can go check them out and start learning um, the reason I'm making this video is because uh, I thought, you know, I should share some tips with you on, on the mistakes that a lot of young developers make and how you can avoid them. Now, how, how do I, you probably might be thinking, how do I know, uh, you know, about the mistakes that young developers make, right? Um, so the thing is that since the past three years, like I said, you know, I've been running a tech consultancy firm and uh, we have a team of 25 developers, right? So I've recruited them from scratch. I've built the products uh, from scratch, you know, I've trained them. Uh, on how to write good code, how to, all the all the best coding practices, on how to you know think about problem solving. So I've mentored more than hundred uh, developers offline. I'm new to YouTube, but offline I've been doing a lot of work since the past few years, right? And I have more than ten years of experience. Uh, I mean, I've I've worked in companies and then I've started my own firm. So I have more than ten years of experience of uh, technology, and right from um, you know designing. Um, you know product architectures to uh, you know setting up the entire cloud uh, cloud uh, infrastructure to uh, you know maintaining the product and then going going uh, through all the software development life cycle uh, that a product can you know provide you with i've seen all the products through every single you know perspective through every single lens every single stage i've i've seen them multiple times over right and um, to have 25 developers working in your company means that you have to go through a lot of developers, right? Many people join a company and then they uh, get trained and then probably they get better offers. So they leave in a year's time or something. So I've you know worked with 100 developers directly. Uh, I, I've managed them directly till now uh, in the past three years. And I have mentored them and I've seen their, uh, you know, the, the problems that they face and how they overcome them. So I'm, I'm bringing all this knowledge now to YouTube or to the online platform, but offline I've already been doing doing a lot of work. All right, so um, so let's let's go through a common a few common issues that I, I've seen a lot of people make and and how you can avoid them. So when when somebody is learning a new technology, let's say uh, you know if if they were a Java developer and now we want them to work on GoLang, for example, just just a just a crude example, right? Uh, and 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 we've given them some uh, you know material to to read and uh, you know study with like mostly youtube videos and the problem that i'll see f that they're making is that they won't code along i mean they'll just keep watching the videos like it's some kind of a movie like it's on netflix the problem here is that uh, you're not building any muscle memory right so that's why in my videos i uh, type every single thing out even even if there's uh, things are repeating and i can just copy and paste them i type every single thing out and sometimes i even uh, a lot of people ask me you know why have you not installed a lot of vs code uh, extensions like you know spell check and all those things because um because I think it's it's very important to build muscle memory. Even let's say you know you have no extensions, right? You have nothing checking your uh, syntax, nothing checking your spelling, and all of that. And you actually become a really good developer by actually knowing and kind of memorizing everything that you're typing. So I, I think that that really helps a lot, right? So that's that's one way. Like you, so whenever you're watching any video uh, on on YouTube, any course on Udemy or something like that, you have to code along, right? And many people ask me just directly for the code. So they think that they can just go to GitHub and just get the code and then they, you know, uh, probably use it in an interview or, or uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, uh, assignment for the interview for a company. Now, the guys who are taking the interview are guys like me, right? We're, we're super smart. We know what you're going to do. So uh, when we ask you to build stuff, we, we probably might take you on a video call and we want to see uh, exactly how you think out the solution. We'll give you a difficult problem uh, and we'll see how you work out the solution right 
and that's not uh, so there are there are companies i know that there are companies which are not engineering driven companies they will probably give you assignments and then they'll expect you to come back uh, for after the weekend and submit the assignment but then there are smart companies right which are engineering driven and which are led by people who are themselves like hardcore engineers right they know what you're going to do and they're going to take you on a video call and then take you like ask you to build something in front of them and they're going to see how you think about things what kind of code you write and and they they'll come to know you know it's like if if you're on on a call with me i'll come to know uh your pedigree not in terms of like the college you've been to i, I don't care about that but pedigree in terms of how good you are with development in a sense you know how do you think about the structure how do you solve the problem how are you formulating uh, the solution to the problem that i've given you right and um so one thing that you can do to solve that completely is by coding along so whenever i make videos i make code along videos where you build stuff i don't i don't you know just uh, show you the, here are the basics of golang and i don't i don't do all that shit right i i build products you build products with me and you memorize everything you you build muscle memory because when you uh, have to go to an interview which is like a video call and where there's somebody really senior uh, on the other side of the call uh, he can come to know very easily the way you start writing the code he can come to know like that you know uh, as to how much you've practiced how much actually you've built products and how much actually you know you have uh, muscle memory um the reason is that this makes you a very efficient developer right uh, if if you're somebody who has to always go to uh, stack overflow for every single thing like uh, you know how to uh, adjust uh, <laughs> you know for example space Uh, in CSS, something like that. If if you're somebody like that who's like overly dependent on Stack Overflow, uh, like uh, the 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 average companies will accept you, but the the top companies, the top engineering companies, they're not going to take you in. They want people who are really really good developers, and uh, you know who have just un- internalized the art of uh, coding. Basically, that's the kind of guys uh, people are looking for. All right, and so no not coding along. Uh, is a big problem always code long whenever you see videos uh, like mine or like other uh, videos on youtube which are teaching you stuff on how to build products code along with them all right the second thing is not getting the basics right now uh, so understanding the basics and getting them right in the sense by getting them right i mean you have to have applied those basics somewhere so you might know what mutexes are you might know what uh, semaphore is you might know what how concurrency works right you've seen a nice animated video of how concurrency works but if you've not applied it in let's say building a scraper or building uh, a product you won't you won't know what it is i mean this uh, this boss like you know you can you can do all the uh, samples on websites like golang tour and all those uh, all those websites which teach you the 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 concept by actually giving you a very small example but unless you've actually seen the real world usage of how you can use it to make uh, things better and more efficient you won't know um, how to use it so when i said get the basics right i don't i don't mean that you just memorize all the examples that you see on the websites where they're showing you the basics but like get them right in the sense use them so whenever whenever i have projects right i have projects starting from the simple projects to the to the more advanced projects so i have a lot of uh, what do you call it scrapers right starting from how to use uh, structs how to use slices how to use all those different things building all the way up to mutexes and semaphores right so if you have gone through this whole curve and you know where to where exactly to apply which uh, technology and why that makes you an amazing developer so as as a young developer if you get these two things right you're uh, you know you more you're probably sorted already let's look at some other things that young developers do right so uh, if you're trying to become a great developer you need to have other friends who are really great developers as well because uh, you need people to rely on you need people to ask problems you need you, because you're going to run into really big issues and really big problems and having people who can help you out at that problem uh, it's going to be very very helpful to you all right and um, just having friends in general i mean go to linkedin network with other developers and uh, instead of i i think that instead of networking with ceos and all those other people who you think might be useful having people at your level who are just a little better than you let's say somebody who's uh, a little better or or really be good at golang or somebody who is just a python developer you know who's not very senior who's not like the ceo of a company or a cto but he was just you know a python developer a senior python developer having those kind of friends is going to be very helpful to you so go to networking events make a lot of friends give your code up for uh, peer review uh you know uh, ask them to send you code for peer reviews and uh maybe collaborate you know collaborate on uh things probably 
so uh, having peers is very very important so having friends who are developers uh, that's going to make a lot of difference in your career i mean uh, uh, don't underestimate the power of this single step right uh, because they'll share the best practices with you they'll share the right technologies you'll come to know the updates and, and technology updates and uh, the best practices you'll stay ahead of the market very easily by just having good friends who uh, understand technology and the same uh, mostly the same technology that you're working on all right and uh, the fourth problem is not joining the right company. Now, uh, you you will apply to a lot of companies, and then you'll probably end up joining a company which is, let's say, an e-commerce website, right? For them, uh, for them, technology is important, but you're not going to innovate a lot because uh, unless you're, let's say, building an AI recommendation engine on an e-commerce platform. So that's uh, so obviously here I'm not talking about the likes of Amazon's and all those big companies. I'm just talking about like let's say a regular e-commerce tech company, right? Uh, unless unless you're building like the AI engine of the recommendation uh, AI recommendation engine of for uh, for that company for that e-commerce platform, there's not a lot of innovation there. So join the right by right, the right company. I mean somebody who's doing a lot of innovation right now. Somebody who's building st something from scratch. Somebody who's trying to build a project that's really difficult to build. Right. That's where um, you're going to learn a lot. So you can learn technology. Right, you can learn good uh, amounts of uh, amount of technology like GoLang and all of that. You can get really good at it, and then you can completely kill your career by going to a really shit company uh, who just gives you a lot of money, but you don't have to really innovate. I mean, uh, ten years back, that used to be a good thing where you know you you could say that hey, I don't you know I get a lot of money, but I don't have to work a lot. Right now, the, now your career is dead if you don't get to work a lot. Trust me, in five years you will be completely replaceable. Nobody is going to pay you anything. Uh, because your technology will be just, you know, uh, completely uh, forgotten. So trust me, if you if you're not getting to do the right work, if you're not getting to work hard or you know really think really hard and you know completely, it's if your work is not very very challenging, then you're in a really bad place. I mean, you have to get the right company. You have to get into the right company. All right, your work has to be super challenging so that you're you know always struggling. You're always find having to find peers, having to you know um, find the answers online or learn more. There's something that challenges you to learn a lot more, right? So, uh, for example, using GoLang to build computer vision, or uh, you know, uh, building machine learning models, or uh, you know, generally AI—that's the, that's the kind of work you should be uh, doing, uh, according to me, right? So, as a young developer, just punch above your weight. Go for like really difficult projects. Go for companies that probably not don't pay you more, but have very challenging work going on. Because in the next five years, that will completely redefine your career, right? If you take up easy jobs now, which are just paying you good enough right now, your career is dead. Uh, I'm sorry to say that. And the last, the fifth point is not building enough projects. Now you could be learning uh, GoLang and you could be learning Python and then people have really low standards, right? So I've realized that the young developers, they think that, okay, now I know arrays, now I know, uh, you know, maps and uh, Python and all of those things, and now I'm done, you know, I just know basic data structures and that's it. But nobody cares about data structures anymore. I mean, uh, probably uh, companies like, uh, you know, just, just the few fan companies, they might care a lot about data structures, but uh, the other companies, the ones, you know, which are like, let's say the Fortune 1000 companies, then they don't start focusing too much on data structures. They want to see people who have built stuff, right? Who build stuff, who are very passionate about technology. And uh, even the companies below Fortune uh, Fortune 1000, like all, all the medium-sized companies and all the startups, they care about people who really want, who are re very passionate about building stuff, right? Uh, <clears throat> because then it's, it's like a guarantee that you would really think about problems hard. You would, uh, you know, uh, not abandon the problem. That's what uh, a startup owner or let's say a mid-sized company is looking for, right? They're not looking for data structures. So, um, like, it's it's very good to know data structures. Very good to you know have a strong grip on them. But uh, the main point is building enough projects, right? So, for example. Uh, you know what a linked list is, you've implemented it, but there's a video on my channel that shows you how to build a database from linked list, right? Uh, so that's like applying data structures somewhere. That's something very practical and very useful. Now, if you have those kind of projects on your CV, uh, obviously you have an edge over the other guy who's just built, let's say, a very simple uh, CRUD API in, or just a to-do list in, in uh, Golang, right? If you've built your own cache, if you've built your own containers, if you've built your own database in Golang, People are going to notice you. People are going to, uh, you know, want to hire you. So um, build a lot of projects. Don't have low standards that okay. Now I've built just one project. Okay, I, I'm the, you know, I know GoLang enough. Build probably 40 projects. You know, so um, 
I mean, find you. Uh, there are tutorials on Udemy. There are courses on Udemy. There's there are videos on YouTube which help you build stuff, right? Build uh, stuff in Node.js or Golang or Python. Do a lot of projects. Uh, get a lot of experience under your belt. Build a, build an amazing portfolio. <clears throat> so I'm at the stage right now where I don't have to have a portfolio because I already have uh, built products that are being used by companies, right? So nobody asks. Uh, so if I uh, right on the side, I also consult companies. I consult uh, you know really big companies like Bose and Havels and uh, Philips, and um, they pay me uh, hundreds of dollars by the hour. If, at the time when I'm running my own companies, they pay me hundreds of dollars an hour just to consult them. Sometimes when they run into really big issues with their teams, right? So they have these massive teams and they have to work on, let's say, a huge Golang product. And now they, they, they're they running into issues. They have to hire uh, like a couple of hours from uh, somebody who's an expert like me. Uh, so, so when you've reached that stage, nobody's really asking you for your GitHub profile, right? Like nobody comes to me and says, hey, Akhil, can we look at your GitHub profile and see what type of projects are you doing? Because they know that I'm not the guy who comes into type code. I'm the guy who, you know, teaches the teams on how to get the right product architecture and all of those things. So uh, at this stage, uh, you know, I've built products. So they know, okay, companies are using this product. So this guy has built it. So, you know, let's hire him for this particular problem. But uh, as, a, as a junior developer, people are going to want to look at your GitHub profile. They're going to look at every single project that you've done. They will want to you know, look at the code quality and all of those things, right? So have a lot of projects under your belt and have a lot of uh, you know, uh, projects on your GitHub profile um, or, or maybe you know, make them live, put them on Netlify or Heroku or something like that. So these are the five things, uh, things that I want to really share with you. You know, uh, since I, I want you to benefit not just as a developer, not just some, as somebody who just knows Golang, but somebody who can build stuff with Golang, who can who gets really nice jobs at really great companies, right? And I'm I'm always there if you want to, uh, you know, probably uh, uh, you know just bounce bounce off ideas or just you know uh, say hello. I'm always there. You can just put a comment and we can uh, you know have a call or something. And uh, I've. So there's one thing that you probably don't know about me is that I sit on the panel of many uh, tech companies while taking interviews. So if you want to, uh, you know, understand how how that works, I can just give you, uh, I can write an email or I can just, you know, get on a call with you and just explain to you in like 15, 20 minutes what the things that you, you can do to even get better at uh, giving interviews at top tech companies, right? And what, what are the things that people like me are looking for, the panelists on a top tech interview uh, company are looking for, right? So I can tell you those things and I'll probably make videos about it as in, you know, instead of having one-to-one -one calls i'll just make a video so that everybody comes to know so but these are the five things that as a young developer uh you need to be doing right so, so you have to be coding along you have to be getting the basics right you have to have peers and friends you have to join the right company uh, if you want your career to prosper and you have to be building a lot of projects uh, even after you got that job that you were looking for keep building projects on the side don't just keep sitting on what your company has given you right so people are looking for that as well so if you just they got this big uh, you know uh, let's say inventory management platform that you're working with the company that you're working with right now but on the side you stop doing anything then the next company uh, that uh, you know is wants to see your extracurricular in the sense what else were you uh, up to while, while working at the firm so you'll have problems getting job after that so get these things right and I'll, I'll share a lot of these type of videos which will help you get more perspective on how to uh, approach the tech industry, right? So thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next episode.